Praise the Lord. If you are there for miracle, I said, praise the Lord. If you know that it's going to be the dawn of a new beginning in your life, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to this special retreat, the first of its kind in deeper life since deeper life began in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to open the windows and the doors of heaven tonight upon you. Great blessings are coming upon your life. That check in your hand from the bank of heaven, this period, everything you are asking for, the Lord will grant to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for today. What a great day and a wonderful day. A day of turning around. A day of change. A day of transformation. A day of salvation. A day of deliverance. A day of dominion. A day of authority and power. Lord, I pray that nobody here, nobody over there, nobody attending this retreat, anywhere with us, will go empty-handed in Jesus' name. You bless the young and you bless the old. Our children, bless them. Our students, bless them. Our youths, bless them. Our parents, fathers and mothers, bless them. Our members, invitees, everybody, bless them. Even from tonight, great mighty blessings overflowing in every life in Jesus' name. Confirm your power in every life. And Lord, I pray every enemy will come under the feet of your people. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come to the beginning of such a retreat like this, I want to read the promise of God to you and what God has decided is going to do in your life. And I believe as you pray, every item in your prayer, God will answer. Isaiah chapter 43. And I'm reading from verses 18 and 19. Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 18 and 19. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. It's not uh, saying that in a question form. It's not saying, Don't you remember? It says, It doesn't say, Do you remember? Remember not you the former things? Don't you consider the things of old? No, it's not a question, it's affirmative. It's a statement. He's telling you what not to do. He's saying, forget the tears of the past. Forget the sorrows of the past. Forget the pressures of the past. Forget all your suffering of the past. A new day has come in your life. Verse 18 again, remember ye not the former things. Don't let anybody remind you of what you were in the past. What you suffered in the past. What failure you were and you went through in the past. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. It says now verse 19. Behold. 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 I will do a new thing. A new thing in your life. A new thing in your family. A new scene in everything that surrounds you in Jesus' name. I see a new man in front of me. I see a new woman in front of me. I see new families here gathered together. Behold, I will do a new scene. Now, when? Now, I said when? Now, it shall spring forth. Here comes the question. Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in your desert. Rivers in your desert. Our time has come for the new dawn. The dawn of a new beginning. Let me just uh, run through the word of God with you and you'll see what the Lord is going to accomplish in your life. I'm coming to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 
I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Blessed be the Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's telling us all blessings from heavenly places. The Lord is going to shower upon everyone. And as you look at that verse, it says, we're rejoicing already. We're praising him already. Because it says, blessed be the God of, uh, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Salvation is available. Restoration is available. Holiness is available. Grace is available. Healing is available. Deliverance is available. Authority is available. Power is available. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It will be confirmed in your life. Chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus the Lord is going to translate you from the problems on earth to the glory and the power of heaven. The Lord is going to translate you and is going to make you see that together in every place he is in Christ Jesus. Enemies will be under your feet. Suffering will be under your feet. Problems will be under your feet. As you link up with the Lord and connect with the Lord, you'll sit down Resting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able, you're going to discover something in this retreat, that God is able. He's going to roll all your problems away because he's able. He's going to forgive your sin because he's able. He's going to save your soul because he's able. Is going to deliver you from every power of darkness because it's able. It's going to give you authority and power that will never be conquered anymore because he is able now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Now you need to understand that everything you're asking, the Lord will go beyond that. When you have said, I've asked the greatest, he'll give you the greatest and he'll go beyond. I've asked the mightiest, the unthinkable, the incredible. He'll give you all that, he will go beyond. That means your cup is going to run to overflowing. Your joy will overflow. The power of the Lord in your life will overflow. Because he's able and he's willing. And it's going to do, even from tonight, exceeding abundantly above all you ask, all you seek, according to the power that worketh where? I said where? The power that worketh in us. Anything that's in you that's not of God, the power of God will come from heaven, drive that thing away. And the power will work in every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 23. I'm being renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's a retreat for our renewal. The Lord is going to renew you. And the Lord is going to transform your life. And then it says in verse 24, And that ye put on the new man. A new dawn, a new song, a new testimony, a new life, a new creature, a new character. Everything is going to turn around to become new. It says that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Everything fake, everything counterfeit, the Lord will sweep away from your life true, genuine, something that ever will plant in your life, you are in for something great, something unforgettable. I'm looking at chapter 5 and verse 30. For we are members of his body. 
of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and his church. He's saying there, is, there has been a gap between the church and Christ. Christ is up there. The church is now here. And that gap, the Lord is going to bridge that gap. Until every member will become members of his body. And there is no sickness in him. There will be no sickness in you. There's no attack, affliction in him. There's not going to be attack in you, affliction in you. There is no sin in him. There's not going to be any sin in you. Because we become members of his body and of his flesh, of his bones. Chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse 11. Chapter 6, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. You'll put on something that Satan cannot overcome. You'll put on something that sin cannot overcome. You'll put on something that the flesh cannot penetrate. You'll put on something that powers of darkness will not be able to penetrate. It will happen to you from tonight. Look at this. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand. You have not been able to stand in the past. Now you are going to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at verse 16. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able. Thank God, in this retreat, you'll be able. The weakest of us will become stronger than all their problems. The weakest of us, the tiniest of us, will become greater than all the challenges of our lives in Jesus' name. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It's happening right now. Tonight, we're looking at the message, the deliverance and dominion of a conquering Christian. Have you noticed in that, uh, in that uh, topic, number one, a Christian. God will make you the Christian you ought to be. I say God will make you the Christian you ought to be. Look at another thing there. A conquering Christian. Not a defeated Christian. We're going to forget. We're going to bury all the weakness of the past. They'll be buried away from your life, from my life, from our lives in Jesus' name. And then look at this, the deliverance of a conquering Christian. Look at this, the dominion of a conquering Christian. By the time you pack everything together, you are in for deliverance. And you are in for dominion. And you are in for power. You are in for authority. And from tonight, you begin to conquer everything that comes against your life in Jesus' name. We're going to consider three points, and after that, we're going to pray. Somebody there tonight will pray. I said somebody there tonight will pray. And prayer is going to attract heaven into your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the promise. Number one, the promise. Number two, the power. Number three, the position. The position number one the promise of a new dawn the promise of a new dawn this is the promise the lord has given you and this promise cannot fail will not fail you will not miss it in jesus name tell me number one over there the promise of a new dawn number two the power for a renewed deliverance. You said, I've got deliverance before. Something new. Something greater. Something higher. Will come upon your life in Jesus name. The power for a renewed deliverance. Number three. The position of remarkable dominion. The position you get to. And then there's dominion in your life. Remarkable dominion in your life. The position 
of remarkable dominion. Number one is telling us about the promise, the promise of a new dawn. In Second Peter chapter one, it tells us the kind of promise is given unto us. And you want to personalize everything, not just us, not just the church at large, you in particular. In Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things. How many things are you going to have? I said how many things are you going to have? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. He has called you to glory. He has called you to virtue. Everything bringing disgrace will be wiped away from your life. Look at verse 4. Whereby I give you unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Think about that. Forget the past. Think about the new day. And think about the new position that you have and the new privilege you have that he says he has given us and he has given you exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Your human nature will be re you're replaced by the divine nature. The human nature is weak. The strength of the divine nature will come to you. The human nature is sickly. The health of the divine nature will be given unto you. The human nature is sinful. But the holiness and the righteousness of the divine nature will be imparted unto you. I will have mine. I said I will have mine. I will not be disappointed. I will not go away empty handed. A change is coming upon my life tonight. Say for yourself, a change is coming upon my life tonight. It says, he has given us great, precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped, somebody there has escaped. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We're talking about the promise. And it's a promise of a new dawn. When that promise has been fulfilled, what are you going to see? What are we going to observe in your life? What are you going to observe in your own personal life? It tells us in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Reading from verse 40, the last verse there. God, having provided some better thing for us. God, having provided some better thing for us. God has provided better things for you. Think about your life. Think about the good things you had in the past. You said, praise the Lord, I'm saved. God has provided better things for you. Praise the Lord, I'm sanctified. God has provided some better things for you. Praise the Lord, I'm happy and joyful. God has provided some better things for you. Think about what other people have heard. You start from Enoch and Abel and all the other people of the Old Testament. God has provided some better things for you. You see, so and so has that, so and so has that. God has provided better sin for us that without us, they should not be made perfect. At the end of this retreat, you're going to look at your life. You check up this area, you say, praise the Lord, things are better. Look at this area, praise the Lord, things are better. Better days have come. Better things have come. Hold on to that word and make a checklist in your life. Because those better things, by the grace of God, in your life. Who am I talking about there? In your life, is going to start tonight in Jesus' name. 
Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing. You will be a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. Tell me the rest there. There shall be showers of blessing. A rain of blessing is coming upon your life. A rain of salvation. A rain of sanctification. A rain of healing. A rain of deliverance. A rain of victory. A rain of success. And it says in your life, in your family, say, I believe. There will be showers of blessings in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 11. And I will multiply upon you, man and beast. Multiplication has come. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you. And I will settle you. Anything unsettled in your life from tonight, the Lord is going to begin to settle your life. Family life, it will settle your family life. Business life, it will settle your business life. Your spiritual life, it will settle your uh, spiritual life. Your professional life, it will settle your professional life in Jesus' name. It says, I will settle you after your old estate. Look at this, look at this. And I will do... And I will do better unto you than at your beginning when you compare yourself after this retreat with your former life. You are going to find things are much, much better. Your heart will testify, your spirit will testify. Better days have come. And you're coming, you're going to the new year with this better. Promise and better possession in Jesus' name. And I will, I will do better things unto you than at your beginning. And you shall know that I am the Lord. The first word there is better. The second word is greater. We're looking at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 9. Haggai chapter 2. Verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In this place, in this retreat, greater things will come upon your life in Jesus' name. You'll climb higher, you'll go greater. You do greater things, and the greater blessings of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 1, verse 50. John chapter 1, verse 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see, thou shalt see, thou shalt see greater things than these. That's the dawn we're talking about. It's the promise of a new dawn. That it says, number one, it's going to give us better things. Number two, it's going to give us greater things. Number three, higher. Help me shout higher. Somebody there is not going to remain on the same level. Shout higher. You're not going to remain the same in the, you know, if you were strong before, you're going to go higher. Wise before, you're going to go higher. Blessed before, you're going to go higher. Because it's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. And begin to think about every area of your life. Because the promise of the Lord is that you are going to go higher. We're looking at uh, Psalm 61. Psalm 61. And I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth. Will I cry unto thee? 
when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Somebody there is going to become stronger. Number one, in the new dawn, better. Number two, in the new dawn, greater. Number three, in the new dawn, higher. Number four, in the new dawn, stronger. Stronger. Praise the Lord, I see strong people there. I said, praise the Lord, I see strong people there. Everything that weakened you in the past, the Lord will strike away from your life. And every remembrance of being so weak, I cannot, I cannot, all that I cannot, it will take away from your dictionary. I'm looking at uh, Psalm 105, verse 24. Psalm 105, verse 24. It tells us in verse 24, He increased His people greatly. Are His people here tonight? I said, are his people here tonight? Where are they now? Wonderful. Somebody shout, wonderful. And he increased his people greatly. Look at this. And he made them stronger than their enemies. Stronger than their enemies. I'm looking at, I'm looking at lamentation now. And I'm reading from verse chapter 4, verse 7. The next word is purer, purer. You're going to be purer. Pure, purer, purest. Pure, tell me, purer, purest. One, two, three, go. Pure, purer, purest. Do you know you're going to be purer than before you came? Your heart will become purer. Your life will become purer. Because it's a new day. A new day is the dawn of a new beginning. It tells us in Lamentation chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 7. Lamentation chapter 4 verse 7. And Nazarites were, put, were purer than snow. Purer than snow. And were whiter than milk. The next word is there. Whiter. Somebody shout whiter. They were more ruddy in body than rubies the polishing of sapphire already we've seen the word purer but let's go to psalm 51 psalm 51 reading from verse 7 psalm 51 reading from verse 7 it says in verse 7 purge me who is going to receive a purging tonight purge me with Aesop and I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And you know he wants to do something in your life. He wants to make you wiser, wiser. You'll be wise. I say you're going to be wise. If you're wise already, you'll be wiser than you were before. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 98. From verse 98, thou, through the commandments, thy commandments, has made me, has made me, has made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. All their tricks and all their pranks, you'll be wiser than them. That's what the Lord is telling us. He's giving us the promise of a new dawn. Is the dawn of better things? Is the dawn of greater things? Is the dawn of higher things? Is the dawn of stronger life? Is the dawn of a purer character? Is the dawn of a whiter behavior? And is the dawn of a wiser personality? And as the Lord has promised, He's going to do that. We believe the promise of God. I believe the promise of God. I said, I believe the promise of God. And as you believe, there's a fulfillment in your life already tonight in Jesus' name. Look at what the Lord is saying about his promise. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and I read from verse 16. 
Romans chapter 4, verse 16. It says, therefore, it's of faith. All those promises who have read something better, something greater, something higher, something stronger, something purer, something whiter, something wiser, is by faith. And it says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. The grace of God will do it in your life. To the end, the promise might be sure. The promise is sure to all the seed. And then he goes on to say that also, which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. How did um, Abraham have all the promises that God gave him? Look at uh, verse 17, as it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead, and called those things would be not as though they were. All those promises the Lord has given us, you are calling those things would be not as though they were, which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that, which was spoken is, so shall thy seed be, so shall thy life be, so shall thy family be. According to everything that is spoken to us tonight, so it will be your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19, and be not weak in faith, not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. Don't consider your present condition. He knew sin is going to happen. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God. All these promises the Lord has given us, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. Somebody there is fully persuaded tonight salvation must come to you you're fully persuaded healing must come to you you're fully persuaded deliverance must come to you you're fully persuaded you are going to become better even from tonight i'm fully persuaded stronger i'm fully persuaded greater i'm fully persuaded higher i'm fully persuaded purer i'm fully persuaded whiter i'm fully persuaded I see somebody wiser there tonight. I'm fully persuaded. He says, be fully persuaded that what God has promised is able to perform. Performance tonight. Performance tonight. Performance tonight. In my life, performance. I said in my life, performance. Point number two, we come to the power of renewed deliverance the power for a renewed deliverance total deliverance in your life tonight in jesus name every area of your life completely will be delivered from the hand of anything negative anything dark and the lord will grant you all that he has promised you in jesus name Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah, just one chapter, verse 17. Obadiah, verse 17. Upon, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. You are Mount Zion here for this retreat. And this is where the presence of God has told us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And he says, upon this mount, there shall be deliverance. For who? I said, for who? There shall be deliverance for everyone. And there shall be holiness. Give me a good amen there. And the house of Jacob shall possess. And the house of Jacob shall possess. And the people of God shall possess. And brother, sister before me there shall possess. 
The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. This is the day of deliverance. It's the period of deliverance. And the Lord has said, we gather before him. And he says, when we gather before him, he's going to manifest his power. He'll break every yoke in our lives. He'll destroy the works of the devil. He will search the captive free. He'll bring deliverance to everyone. That's why we're gathered here, so that no yoke will remain in your life. No oppression will remain in your life. No infirmity will remain in your life. No tears will remain in your eyes. The Lord will wipe everything away. He tells us, he tells us in Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5, he said, gather my sins together unto me. Gather my sins together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The Lord Jesus Christ has been sacrificed for us. And we're gathered in his name. And when we gather in his name, he said, we should do something. We should pray. What is he going to do when we pray? Look at verse 15. Verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. The Lord will deliver everyone tonight in Jesus name. When God says I will, nobody can stop you. And he says I will in your life. I will deliver you. I will set you free. I'll untie everything that ties you down. I will lose you. And I will make you go free. It's going to happen to you tonight in Jesus' name. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall, not, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. My fortress, my God, in it will I trust. Surely. Surely. Somebody say, surely. Somebody say aloud, surely. Surely he shall deliver thee. No doubt tonight. No unbelief tonight. Surely he shall deliver thee. Let me ask you, does he have power to deliver you? Look at that sickness. Does he have power to deliver you? Look at that oppression. Does he have power to deliver you? Look at the sorrow of your heart. Does he have power to deliver you? Look at somebody running elter skelter because they're chasing him. Does he have power to deliver him tonight? Surely. Surely. I see a miracle there. Surely. I see deliverance there. Surely. I see joy there. Surely. I see victory there. Surely. I see dominion there, surely. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, deliverance has come. Verse 14, verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Because he has set his love upon me. Anybody loving the Lord here tonight? I love the Lord. Say, I love the Lord. And it says, because you have set his love, your, his love upon your heart. It says, therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Promotion has come. I will set him on high. I said, promotion has come. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He has known my name. Psalm 107. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word. Anybody hearing the word of God tonight? What did, what did he do after sending his word? Heal them. Heal them. Heal them. I see him there. Heal them. I see her there. Heal them. I see them over there. Heal them. He sent his word. The moment his word enters into your ears tonight, healing will enter with the word. He sent his word and heal them. 
and delivered them from their destruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. He delivered them. Somebody there is totally delivered. It will be unto you according to your faith. You receive the word, you receive that deliverance. You receive the word and you benefit from that deliverance in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced breaking breezing wall. The Lord will set a fence around you. Evil will not penetrate again. Darkness will not penetrate again. Sickness will not penetrate again. Calamity will not penetrate again. I will make thee unto this people a fence breezing wall. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to and to and to deliver thee, says the Lord. I will deliver thee. Verse 21, I will deliver thee. Verse 21, I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. Wicked people will not terminate your life. They will not destroy you. They will not stop your journey halfway. They will not cause sorrow and tears in your, in your heart. They will not stop the plan of God for your life in Jesus' name. If they meet behind any door, God will frustrate all their plans. If they go to the depths of the sea, the river will sweep away all their plans. If they go to any mountain, the power of God will strike them and scatter them in Jesus' name. I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the hands of the terrible. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the terrible. Give an amen that will confirm it to your life. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. It tells us in verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. He's paid the price. He has done everything there is to do. He has satisfied heaven. He has satisfied the demands of the heavenly father. And he has satisfied all the conditions for your deliverance. Because it says, who gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from the present evil world. That he might deliver me, deliver you, deliver us from the present evil world. According to the will of God our Father. Thank God it is done. I said, thank God it is done. Now with that deliverance, where do you stand? With that deliverance, where do you find yourself? Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, fit, suitable. You are fitting into the blessing of God tonight. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who has delivered us. I'm going to make it personal for myself. Who has delivered me. Has it happened? I said has it happened? It has happened. It is confirmed in Jesus name. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness whatever the power of darkness intended to do you have escaped whatever the powers of darkness have been trying to do in your life manipulating your life you can't move forward you can't climb you can't go forward you can't be promoted and these cannot happen that cannot happen thank god he has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us 
you're not in the same place again. He has translated us. You're not in their midst again. He has translated us. You're not under the oppression anymore. He has translated us. You're not under the dominion of sin anymore. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have, thank God I have. In whom we have, I said, thank God I have. In whom we have redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Any guilt tonight, the Lord will take that away. Condemnation tonight, the Lord will take that away. Any kind of sin that's still oppressing the heart, the Lord will take that away tonight in Jesus' name. Because it says, you know, we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. Remember, remember. Every sin you confess, he will forgive. He will cleanse. He will take away. And he'll bring the joy of forgiveness and the joy of freedom into your heart, even tonight in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we urge unto you. How ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for his son from heaven who be raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which, what did he do? Delivered us from the wrath to come. Future judgment, he also delivers you. Future condemnation, he also delivers you. Once salvation comes, all your sins are forgiven and forgotten. Your salvation comes, condemnation, judgment is forgotten. And your name is written in the book of life. You are going there. Heaven, I said you are going there. The bosom of Christ, you are going there. And that power of the devil is not the way out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, that's what he has done. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. Through death, he paid the penalty that you owed that was upon you on the cross of Calvary. He's done that already. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. You're free. Yeah. I said you're free. Yeah. Look at the consequent the result in verse 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now he has delivered you. No more fear. Fear of future judgment, he has delivered you. Fear of condemnation, he has delivered you. And that deliverance will lead you into the victorious life in Jesus' name. I want you to underline this one. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. It's something for you to take to heart. This is mine. This is yours. Say, this is mine. I can't hear my people. This is mine. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. How many evil works? When you come in, you're delivered. Going out, you're delivered. You're in church, you're delivered. Outside the church, you're delivered. You're here tonight, you're delivered. 
every area of your life total deliverance in jesus name and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom somebody there is going to get to the heavenly kingdom you'll be there in jesus name to whom be glory forever and ever amen, amen. Number one is the promise. Number two is the power. The power for a renewed deliverance. Number three, the position of remarkable dominion. The position of remarkable dominion. The Lord tonight is bringing you to a new position. With a new power. With a new authority. It's going to be a remarkable position even from tonight in Jesus' name. As it brings you nearer tonight, see what he's going to do. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye yeah, have got little children and have overcome them. You're coming to the position of an overcomer. I said, I'm coming to the position of an overcomer. You have got little children and have overcome them. Because, because, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus comes into your heart when you are born again. And he comes to live in your heart. When you give that heart to him. And Jesus inside you. You see we can and Satan in the world. Is greater. Is stronger. Because it says greater. You see that is in you. Than he that is in the world. Jesus is greater than parts of darkness in the world. Than the evil in the world. Than the calamity in the world. And that greater one will lift you up. Amen. Let's see an example of that in 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Here we're reading from verse 13. 2 Kings chapter 6. Reading from verse 13. The greater one lives inside you. The greater one abides in you. Great will be your dominion. Great will be your victory. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 13. And he said, go and spy where he is. That I may send and fetch him. That the king of Assyria, talking about Elisha or Elisha. And it was told him saying, behold, it's in Dothan. Therefore sent ye hither horses, chariots, and a great host. And he, and he came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city. Both were chariots, horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he said, Fear not. And he said, Fear not. Help me tell the person beside you there, Fear not. You need to look at them, look at them and say, Fear not. This mountain will move away, Fear not. The sorrow will vanish away. Fear not. These armies of enemies wanting to wage war against your life, they're going to be disbanded. Fear not. Fear not. Tell them. Fear not. This problem is going to be solved. Tell them. Fear not. And all these souls that you see tonight, you will not see them anymore. Tell them. Fear not. And he answered, Fear not, for that, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 
They that be with us. Why don't you personalize that? They that be with you. They that be with you. They that be with you are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that ye may see. I pray the Lord will open your eyes. Your eyes of faith, the eyes of your mind. Then you will understand the unconquerable one is living inside you. And the Lord opened, opened the eyes of, uh, of the young man and he saw. You're going to see tonight. And he saw. I said you're going to see tonight. And he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, the enemies, I pray thee, with blindness. And it's more than with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Thank God you have a new position of remarkable dominion. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 133. Psalm 119, verse 133. It says in verse 33, Order my steps in thy word. Let not iniquity have dominion over me. Iniquity will not have dominion over you. Sin will not have dominion over you. Bad habit will not have dominion over you. Sickness will not have dominion over you. Satan will not have dominion over you. The powers of darkness will not have dominion over you. You're coming into a position of remarkable dominion tonight. It will be confirmed. It will be so in Jesus' name. I'm reading from Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the laws thereof. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. The Lord confirmed that in your life. Victory all the way through. Triumph all the way through. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Now thanks be unto God. Which always, how often? I said how often? Will it happen tonight? Which always, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Making and maketh manifest the savor, the favor, the beauty, the aroma of his knowledge by us in every place. Tonight, the new dawn is starting. That new beginning is starting. If there's any debris, any dirty thing of the past, tonight, the Lord will wash everything away. He'll make you a new creature. He'll give you a new life. He'll put a new song in your mouth. And he'll give you power, dominion, authority in Jesus' name. I'm coming back to, Psalm, to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Don't let the devil make you look back. You're not looking back anymore. You're looking forward. You're not looking at your depravity and defilement of the past. You're looking forward to the cleansing of the Lord tonight. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All sins will be forgiven. I can't hear your amen. 
all oppression will be taken away. All infirmity will be taken away. Your blind eyes will open. Your weak life, it will strengthen. And the better things will start tonight in your life. In Jesus' name. Just don't remember the former things. Don't, just don't consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Something new must happen tonight. I will do a new thing. Heaven must impact your life with something new tonight. I will do a new thing. A new joy must come tonight. A new freedom must come tonight. A new deliverance must come tonight. A new dominion must come tonight. A new strength must come tonight. Something better must happen tonight. Something greater must happen tonight. Something higher must come your way tonight. And something stronger, you never felt as strong as this before, is going to happen tonight. And something purer, it'll purify your heart and purify your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. All your foolishness, it will strike away. It'll make you wiser tonight, and whiter than snow you are going to be. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now, 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 it shall spring forth. Now, when is your blessing? When is the beginning of the new dawn? The new sun, and the new light. And you renew what in your life. When is it going to begin? Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. It says, Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not know it? Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in your wilderness. You are coming out of the wilderness and rivers in your desert. Dryness will vanish away. Weakness will vanish away. Tiredness will vanish away. Your strength is going to bring you tonight in Jesus' name. Your time has come. My time has come. I said my time has come. We're going to begin to catch now the check that came from the bank of heaven. 1,001 blessings. It's going to start with forgiveness and then redemption and salvation and sanctification and power, authority, healing, deliverance, dominion. Heaven is going to shower blessing upon you now. Heaven is ready. God is ready. Somebody there is ready. I said somebody there is ready. Praise the Lord is ready. That's why I'm standing up. I said somebody there is ready. I said somebody there is ready. Why don't you tell the Lord we are here for a purpose. You are here for a reason. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. He'll give you dominion. This is the time of the outpouring of the blessing of God upon everyone. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. 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 He'll forgive your sin. He'll forgive your sin. He'll take the condemnation away. He'll give you the better life. He'll give you the new life. He'll give you salvation. He'll give you total, total freedom from all the chains of sin. Yes, he will do it. Yes, he will do it. You must begin to receive tonight. Remember, he has promised something better. A life better than the past. A life greater than that of the past. A life higher than that of the past. A life that is stronger than that of the past. A life that is purer than that of the past. Your blessing will not pass you by. Your blessing will not pass you by. It's giving us blessings. All blessings. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. He forgives any sin and every sin. He's not bearing grudge against you. He's not saying you have gone too far. He's not saying you are the greatest sinner in the land. Even if you were. The Lord is forgiving you tonight. He offers forgiveness to you tonight. He offers salvation to you tonight. 
He offers freedom to you tonight. He offers the favor and the smile of heaven upon your life tonight. It's your new day. It's your new dawn. Better things have come. Better life has come. You can receive now. You can receive now. The moment you say, God, forgive me, he forgives. The moment you say, God, set me free, he sets you free. The moment you say, I'm sorry, I've lived a bad life, a sinful life, I've been condemned, Christ died for you to take the condemnation away. He's forgiving you now. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's saving you now. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Take my sins away. Take my guilt away. Give me the new life. Give me the better life. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right there. He doesn't discriminate. He has salvation for you. My brother, sister, you were saved before you went away from the Lord. He has restoration for you. He loves you. He calls you back home. Says, come. Come make a covenant with me. I'll forgive you. Remember not the former things. Remember not your backsliding. I'm restoring you now. Giving you a new life now. If you're sick, hand over that sickness to him. He's healing you right now. If you're oppressed, tight now, give that oppression to him. Deliverance is coming right now. Dominion, power, authority is coming right now. You're weak, give him your weakness. Give him your strength right now. You're defeated, give him your defeat. Give him the victory right now. You cannot remain defeated. You cannot remain oppressed. You cannot remain sick. You will not remain sinful. He has called you. Just say, Lord, here I am. I surrender myself to you. Take me now. Receive me now. Save me now. Forgive me now. Set me free now. And he does it. And he does it. You're free already. And the spirit is bearing witness in your heart. My sins are forgiven. I feel the joy of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Surely, surely, He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That's an assurance. There's no doubt. He's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that you ask or think, is doing it right now. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Healing is confirmed. Deliverance is confirmed. Dominion is confirmed. Miracle is confirmed. There's assurance of his blessing, everyone. No one is left out. I'm sure. I'm sure. He was fully persuaded that what he has promised is able also to perform. That's why you're sure your heart tonight. What God has promised is able also to perform. A performance coming upon your life. Total deliverance, thank God, is for you tonight. Freedom, thank God, is for you tonight. Healing, thank God, is for you tonight. 
He sets you free. He sets you free. He sets you free. In Jesus' name we pray. Those who are sure of heaven being opened upon their lives, in Jesus' name we pray. As bowed and eyes closed. You want forgiveness from every sin you ever committed in your life. And you want the Lord to write your name in the book of life. Either you're doing it for the first time, or you've done it before, but then you strayed away. And the Lord with open arms wants to receive you now. And he wants to forgive every sin you ever committed in your life. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I need your forgiveness. Take all my guilt away. Take all my condemnation away. And take all this burden of sin away from me. Anywhere you are. Anywhere you are. Inside. Outside. Anywhere. Just raise up that hand. As you are raising up that hand, tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. Because I know you love me. And I know you are not going to push me away. I know you are not going to reject me. I surrender my life to you right now. I believe. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. I transfer all my sins unto him. To receive his forgiveness. His salvation. And I know you are not going to reject me. You have said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've called upon you now. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. Keep up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you because you reject no one. All these who have asked you sincerely, turning away from the past, turning to you for forgiveness and freedom and salvation. In your love, in your mercy, according to your promise that cannot fail, forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Totally set them free. Set them free. Set them free. Let this moment begin a new dawn in their lives in Jesus' name. For those who straight away who are coming back home, Lord, receive them. Put joy of restoration in their lives. Confirm that restoration now in Jesus' name. And for all your people, anyone who was weak before, strengthen them right now. And Lord, I pray the assurance that will belong to you. Give that assurance to everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now time for total deliverance. Every yoke will be broken. I said every yoke will be broken. The power of sickness will be broken in your life. Any sickness in your life, Jesus is the great physician. Give God a great amen. Any sickness you have, any infirmity you have, any mountain in your life, no matter how high, no matter how long it's been there, this is your time of deliverance. Your time of healing. Your time of miracle. Where is the receiver of miracle there? The receiver of healing there. And the receiver of total deliverance there. When you hear the amen of the people of God, it is confirmed in heaven. 
Whatever we bind on earth is bound, is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose, release on earth is loosed and released in heaven. You lay your hand upon yourself, you raise up the other hand. And you know, you believe, surely, deliverance has come for you. Healing has come for you. There's confirmation in your life right there. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, for everyone. Seek, oppressed, under a yoke, under a curse, whatever. Lord, I pray, break everything now, destroy everything in Jesus' name. Sickness, whatever name you are called, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, let your healing hand touch every sick person here right now in Jesus' name. For those who are under any attack, any affliction, any deformity, Lord, deliver them in Jesus' name. Remove the power of darkness. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. Lord, confirm their healing now. Confirm their deliverance now. Confirm their miracle now. Sickness, oppression, infirmity, you are not there again. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, they have given us assurance. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says, Lord, I have done according to your word, I have spoken to the mountain of sickness, mountain of attack, mountain of affliction, without any shadow of doubt in my heart, and I have told the mountain, move out, it's gone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as you confirm that miracle in every life. Give dominion to everyone. Give power to everyone. Give authority to everyone. Weakness away from your life. Timidity away from your life. Discouragement away from your life. Falling and rising away from your life. Be strong in Jesus' name. Receive that better thing right now in Jesus' name. Be stronger in Jesus' name. Come up higher in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you confirm the blessing upon every life. To my left, to my right. To the front, to the back. In every hall and outside. Let no one miss this beginning of a new dawn. Do good in every life. Confirm the miracle in every life. You have done it. I said, Lord, you have done it. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. Open your mouth and praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord has answered your prayer. Something new has begun. You have a testimony already.